There you go. Okay, it's recording now. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, let's do the recap that you, you talked about. Did we did define what was the divine power? Yes. Right. Right. Okay, we said the divine power is the spirit of God Himself. The net, yeah. yeah. God, the true God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we, we we understand that the we're verses one through four are talking about the introduction of Jesus Christ the Savior as our Savior, mm -hmm. the divine power, and the pro the precious promise. And we defined the precious promise last week, right? Yeah. Yes. So let, so in the recap, we said the divine power uh, is uh, the Holy Spirit power in us. Mm -hmm. And then we, we said the Holy Spirit is one with our spirit. If you belong to Christ, the Holy right. Spirit has come to reside in your spirit. And then we said that uh, all things that pertain to life and godliness mm -hmm. is, uh, is godliness is um, the uh, living a life pleasing to God, godliness, the life of God himself. So right. everything that everything that pertains to uh, being alive, being being um, the the uh, having the life, the life blood of or the source of life in you or, uh, itself, that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, that life is a pulsating, vibrant life. Mm -hmm. the, John John ten ten says Jesus says. I have come that they may have life and okay. have it more abundantly. So the spirit of God is life. And that spirit in our spirit regenerates our spirit, makes our spirit alive. And then it continues to quicken our mother bodies um, to, so that we are, we are energized by that life of God in us. So that is the, that's one of the things the Holy Spirit is doing is energizing our spirit with with the life of God, and then godliness is a uh, the attribute of God Himself, the 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 way God behaves, the way God thinks, the way God acts. All of that is um, God wants us to be like Father, like children, right. and that godliness is. Uh, is is uh, is he has given us that godliness by giving us his spirit? Okay, so it, uh, like we said last week, it's the attributes. Uh, yeah, God does not give any attributes of himself uh, independent of himself. Okay, and and this week we've all right. So like I said. The First one through four, we learn about Jesus Christ and his divine power, his divine nature, like you just defined the attributes of God and the promise. Now, verses five to seven, it's totally opposite. So let's read this part. Okay. okay. Now the, we, we, uh, the, one, the last thing we didn't talk about was the promise. Uh, let me read Romans 4, 13 again, and we would be able to just... Um, cover that recap of that okay. one too. Okay. Is, the ancient promise made to Abraham and his descendants that they should eventually possess the world. This is in J.B. Phillips. I like the way he says it. J.B. Phillips translation of the Bible. The ancient promise given to Abraham and his descendants, which we are one of those, um, that they should eventually possess the world was not given because of any achievement made through obedience to the law, mm -hmm. but because of the righteousness which had its roots in faith. For if after all, they, put the, they who uh, pin their faith on keeping the law were to inherit God's world, it would make no sense of faith in God himself and destroy the whole premise of a promise so promise if um a promise uh is something in that god decided to give of himself not uh because of what we have done so the uh, the faith in the faith 
um, for righteousness is that promise was because it's in that promise um, that we have the uh, the we have that we will eventually inherit the world. Uh, you know, remember, remember um, when when Ishmael was making fun of Isaac when Isaac was weaned and when he said to eat the first day he said to eat uh, regular food. Uh, they threw a party for him. Abraham threw a party for him. And um, in that party, Ishmael, who was a, about 13, 14 at that time, was making fun of uh, Isaac, who, who, was, who had just started to eat meat. And um, Sarah saw that. Uh, Sarah saw, saw that. And Sarah got angry. And Sarah told Abraham, Get rid of the bond, uh, the bond servant, the bond woman, and he had ch her child. For the bond woman shall not inherit with my child. And and Abraham was disturbed. Abraham was grieved when when Sarah said that, and he went to God to go ask what God thought about this, and God said to him. Do as Sarah said, because what Sarah said is right. So God made what Sarah said scripture. God made what Sarah said scripture by saying what Sarah said is right or is correct. The bond, the, 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 the offspring of the bond woman would not inherit with the offspring of the son of promise. This is what they're talking about. Those that are uh, those uh, that are, that think they can obtain righteousness through the law, that are pinning their hopes on righteousness through the law, would never inherit the world um, because the world is given to uh, this uh, to those who are righteous who are righteous by faith. Righteous by faith. And so the people under the law would never inherit the world uh, with the people under, under the promise. You have to come under the promise. That's the only way you can inherit the world. You cannot inherit the world under righteousness by the law. That's why, that's why it says in the uh, scriptures, by obeying the, the law, no one is made righteous before God. By obeying the law, law no one is made righteous before God. Okay, so that's the recap on the promise. That's the yeah. recap on the promise. And now, that, was, that was basically just verse one of this chapter when he said, righteous yeah. God is through the faith of Jesus Christ. And yes. that's what we said, the first thing, the introduction that Jesus Christ is your savior. Yeah. Not yeah. the law. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're ready to move on to five to seven now. Yeah, let's read it. All right, the King James, or I'll read the King James first. And besides this, giving all diligently, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, goodness, and to goodness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. That's the King James Version. Okay, let me read it out of the Phillips, no, the... Uh, Christian Standard Bible. Uh, I want it easy, easy uh, uh, language. So let me read out of um, um, the Christian Standard Bible, CSB. Um, it says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. Okay. All right, we have two questions. Those two questions are wide open. So let's give the, let's do the first one because it's a, and I left out a question. Um, he says, and besides this, given all diligently. So, um, the besides this, we understand as being the chapter verses one through four. 
what God has given us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we agree on that. So then he, the the question I put is, what does Peter say? I'm sorry. Why does Peter say giving all diligently? Okay. The, I went to the dictionary, the uh, Webster's dictionary, to find what the meaning of diligence is. Okay. So if you go to Webster's di uh, dictionary of diligence, mm -hmm. it says sturdy, earnest, energetic effort. Sturdy, earnest, energetic effort. Mm -hmm. um, now, that looks to me like work. <laughs> that looks to me like making every, making, um, uh, working, mm -hmm. working at, at achieving something. Right. Mm -hmm. When I hear about working at achieving something, I, what I hear is the law. And so I, I, I said, I asked those Holy Spirit, I said, what does, what are you, what do you mean? What are you, why are we making earnest effort? Why are we making uh, every effort? What is the why are we what are we what are we working and how is that different from the effort of obeying the law? What what is that when so I asked that question and what the Holy Spirit brought to my mind was Hebrews four. Hebrews four. Okay. If you go to uh, Hebrews four, that same. Um, sentiment is there. Uh, in, in Hebrews 4, it says, uh, let us labor. Let us labor to enter the rest. And so uh, it's the same thing. Uh, now, Hebrews is, was written most likely by Paul. Uh, here, it's Peter speaking. They're both saying the same thing through the Holy Spirit. They're both saying that they, um, that we we labor, but the labor that we are, we are enacting is not by the flesh. Right. The labor that we are enacting is by the spirit, and this uh, and this labor, uh, this labor um, is is gonna look is gonna is, is gonna make us enter a rest. Here, this, this labor in uh, Second Peter is going, to, um, is going to help us enter the fruits of the Spirit. Last week, we looked at that. Uh, we right. said all these things look very much like the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it says, um, so, uh, and, and the thing that, that um, what we're making every effort and it says, make every effort to supplement your faith in, uh, in, in uh, uh, the Christian Standard Bible. To supplement your faith with goodness. Um, that tells me that you're making, your, what is working is your faith, okay? And that faith is bringing about goodness. That faith is bringing about knowledge. That faith is bringing about self-control. That faith is bringing about endurance. That faith is bringing about godliness. That faith is bringing about brotherly affection. And that faith is bringing about love. So what exactly is our faith doing that is bringing about the fruit of the spirit? That is the question. What is our faith doing that is bringing about the fruit of the spirit. Uh, and let me read Hebrews 4 so that we can also understand the same thing. And it says, um, let me start from the beginning. It says, and I'm reading out of the Philips Bible because that was the translation I like. It says, and since the same promise of rest is offered to us today, let us continually on, uh, be on our guard that none of us uh, even looks like failing to attain it. So God is saying, let us be on our guard that we do not, uh, that we fail to attain God's rest. For if we have, if, if we too have a gospel preached to us as those men had, yet the message proclaimed to them did 
them no good because they only heard and did not believe as well. It is only as it is only as a result of our faith and trust that we experience that rest. For he says, for he said, I swore in my wrath, they they shall not enter my rest. Not because the rest was not prepared. It had always been ready since the work of creation was completed. As it says elsewhere in the scripture, speaking of the seventh day of creation, God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in the, uh, in the passage above, he refers to my rest as something already in existence. No, it is clear that some of us have, uh, some, some, uh, no, it is clear that some were intended to experience this rest. And since the previous hearers of the message failed to attain to it because they could not believe God, he proclaimed a further opportunity when he says through David many years later, today, just as he has said today before, today when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. So what is he talking about here? Um, let me recap what he's talking about, where God says, where God uh, proclaimed that they shall not enter his, his rest. This was after, uh, after um, Moses had sent the spies the 12 spies into the land of, of, of Canaan. And they came back with this terrible report that, yeah, the land is good, that everything is flowing with milk and honey, but there are giants in the land. Do you know what, uh, when God told the children of Israel, Israel about the land of Canaan, God says, um, God didn't mention any giants. God says, I have, I have given you the land that is flowing with milk and honey. They, they heard God's voice saying, I have given you. That means that rest, that resting place is yours. And yet they disbelieved God because they thought they needed to get what God already has given them by their own effort. And they missed the rest of God they missed that resting place, which is the promised land, for 40 years. And all of them that were uh, adult age at that time, all of them died in the wilderness. They didn't even enter it, except for Caleb and Joshua. Uh, but they missed God's rest. They made, because God, God, God uh, cursed them and said, you will not enter the rest. You will not enter the promised land because you did not believe me. Now, that's why the faith of God, the faith that uh, the faith in God that God, that uh, achieves the rest is the faith that says that God justifies the ungodly. If you that is that is Romans uh, Romans uh, four thirteen, God justifies the ungodly. The faith, the faith of uh, the faith that. Uh, that enters God's rest is the faith that says, I believe you, God. I believe what, you, what Christ did on the cross. I, I believe that you have given me righteousness because you said so, not because of what I have done, not because of what I'm going to do. In that faith that, uh, that, that says God justifies the ungodly, that faith is what God uh, 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 accounts on your behalf, on my behalf, as righteousness. If you believe the word of God, that God says, God says, I have justified the ungodly by the cross of, the, of Christ, then you have the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. That has made you, in the eyes of God, righteous. And that righteousness is what allows you to enter the rest. The rest means, uh, is, the rest is not, is not um, a lack or a void of activity. The rest is the spirit directed activity. Once you rest and you're not struggling to live, a, uh, to, do, to do God, uh, to live a godly life, by your own effort, guess what? 
the Holy Spirit in you would live the godly life through you, will live the godly life in you and through you. So when it says that we should labor to enter the rest, it's like fight the good fight of faith. Do not be like the, the Israelites that believe their eyes before they believed God. They heard with their ears, God has given us the land, but they believe their eyes more than they believed God. And they believe their eyes saying, there were giants in the land mm -hmm. and we, we are like grass or hoppers beside them. We cannot take them on. They believe their eyes, and the, instead of believing their ears, when God says, I have given you the land. So the same thing with us. When God says, uh, Veronica Adiola, I have given you righteousness. I have given you righteousness. But you, uh, you and I, we see just, uh, just yesterday, we lied. <laughs> we, we, I, I exaggerated. Uh, I, 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 I dislike somebody where I, I did something without faith and we see the evidence with, in our eyes. We see the evidence of uh, how unrighteous deeds that we have done. Now, the question to you as, as the question to the children of Israel was, are you going to believe your lying eyes or are you going to believe the word of God that says, I have made you righteous? by the cross. That's the fight. That is the labor. That is where you need to make up your mind that regardless of how many times I fall, regardless of how many times the evidence, the enemy puts the evidence of my inadequacy before me, I will believe the Lord because the Lord says, I am righteous because of what Christ has done on the cross, not because of what I have done. Now this belief, this belief that you are righteous, even when you fall, would make you righteous. It would bring about righteousness because guess what? It, it, your, the Holy Spirit would, uh, the Holy Spirit that is in you would confirm that, uh, that uh, faith by deeds. And it would come. I like, um... Philippians 2 verse um, chapter 2 verses 12 to 14 it basically says the same thing you do say mm -hmm. but just simplify where he says mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reading out your CSB um make it simple like you said but um it says therefore my dear friend just as you have always obeyed so now not only in my presence but even more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear mm -hmm. and trembling for it is God who is working in you, mm -hmm. both to will and to work according to his purpose, which you just said, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, it's going to work with you. And you know, and like, the Holy Spirit is working in you. Yes. And all you are doing is cooperating with the Holy Spirit. It's yes. the Holy Spirit. Is, and, and let me give you an example of it. Okay. Well, uh, don't need an example yet, because we're going to need examples for the, the virtues. Okay, okay. You're going to need a lot of examples of virtues because all the virtues have examples. So leave all your examples for that point. But, you know, that's why he says give all. Like you said, it's a work. And when a lot of people, that was a question I think you said a couple weeks ago. You said, why are there some strong Christians and why are there some weak Christians? Mm -hmm. now, well, what I actually said was, why are some Christians victorious? Yeah, okay. While some Christians are in defeat. Right. Why is that disperse, the disparate uh, um, um, thing? It's the same Lord, it's the same promise, it's the same God that is in, acting in both, uh, both lives. But one, one Christian is victorious and the other Christian is defeated. So with that... And, the and I, have an, I have an answer. The, uh, the Lord gave me that answer. Oh, okay. I was going to say, wouldn't this be applicable to it, though? Give it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, Abraham is the picture of grace. He is the. If you wanted to, if you wanted to understand grace, get the life of Abraham and, and look at it. Because uh, in 
in the life of Abraham, two people were, were called righteous. God called Abraham righteous, um, and God called uh, uh, Lot righteous. Lot lived a righteous, defeated life. Abraham lived a righteous, victorious life. And if we understand the difference between the two, you would, uh, you, you would understand how we should live a righteous, victorious life. Because Lot was also righteous. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yet he lived a life uh, defeated. He lost his property twice, twice, not even once. He lost his wife. He messed up his family life. He, and yet he was still called righteous because the righteousness was, was, by, was a gift, not by what, they were, what he was doing. The same thing as Abraham. Abraham was called righteous before he did anything righteous. I mean, we know he did one righteous thing, which he, he offered up his son, Isaac, uh, on the altar. That was a righteous act. But before he even did any righteous act, God called him righteous. And, 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 and guess what the, the, the difference between the two men were? When God called them both righteous, God told Abraham, and I'm sure Abraham passed it on to Lot. God says uh, in his promise, um, he says two things. Uh, leave before me, leave before me, and be thou perfect. Leave before me, and be thou perfect. We know that Abraham was not perfect. I can list him on a uh, list all the all his sins for you. Um, so what did God mean by be thou perfect? God explained it what he meant by be thou perfect in Hebrews. Hebrews, uh, and we'll, we'll go there. But uh, in Hebrews, God says, um, if the sacrifices made on the altar, altar was able to make man perfect, they would not have needed to be offered over and over again. But the sacrifice, we now have a sacrifice, Christ sacrifice right. on the cross, that sacrifice has made man perfect. What does that mean? We man is still not perfect, but what that meant, and God, God described it as perfect in our conscience. Perfect in our conscience. Uh, that means God has uh, done all that he needs to wipe out the sense of sin consciousness off of your conscience. You should not have a conscience that is beating you up anymore. You should not have a conscience that says, uh, oh, I have sinned. I'm expecting judgment anymore. Because uh, even though when we sin, well, we, uh, the, the, our conscience should, should be reminded by the Holy Spirit that our punishment has, is on Christ. Our punishment is on Christ. And so there should, be no, uh, there should be no guilty conscience that says, I have sinned um, and God will punish me. That God is not punishing sin in his children anymore. We have passed sin behind. We have passed punishment behind. God would bring you to bring the knowledge of, uh, of what you have done wrong, but only so that you can you can uh, acknowledge you can see what you have done wrong and do right. Yes. But God is not bringing a, a that's why when you say uh, the Holy Spirit has been when we say the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me with about this this thing that I did or something that I didn't uh, did. I said I always say be careful. Is that your conscience? Or is that a Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit would not bring about, bring, uh, would not, the Holy Spirit is not a fault finder. The Holy Spirit would not bring about your, will not hop on your, on your, on your fall, on your fall. Instead, the Holy Spirit, if, when you acknowledge that you have fallen by your con own conscience, the Holy Spirit will remind you that that sin is also covered by the blood. And I'm glad one, one sacrifice for sin forever. I, I'm glad you said that because that was the first thing, you know, add to your faith. So you define the faith that we're talking about. You mm -hmm. define mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ died for our sin, 
that all our sins are forgotten and washed. Yeah, all our sins were on him. All our sins. It, and and it's, it, it's either all or none. Because if uh, all our sins have to be on Christ, you have to believe that all our sins, past, present, future, all of it has to be on Christ or none of it is on Christ. Because it's one sacrifice for sin forever, right? forever. And so, so when we fall, that's why they always give the analogy uh, of the Noah's Ark. When Noah fell in the, in the Ark, um, even we, when Noah sinned in the ark, God didn't throw him out of the ark. God didn't say, okay, Noah, you're, you're, being, you're being too, uh, too sinful. Uh, yeah, jump through the window, please, into the, into the storm. Maybe, uh, we don't know, maybe Noah slapped one of his uh, sons. God didn't, God didn't say, Noah, you're being violent. This is what I punished the rest of the world out there for. Uh, jump into the into the water. No. Noah was safe in the ark, and Noah was going to be safe in the ark regardless of what he did in the ark. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That is that is that is grace. That is huge grace. God, Noah was saved. We are saved in Christ. Now, God would not leave us alone to do the uh, one thing one thing god told me one time I, I, and i and i said uh, i said i asked the lord one time i said why is that you you put us through difficult situations god sometimes god does that put us through difficult situations uh, and god says um, discipline is part of grace discipline is part of grace and i said okay now you have to uh, people get confused and they tell me like uh, this sickness is a discipline of the lord this sickness that death and god says anything all the curses that was put on christ uh, is legally cannot he cannot legally put on you because every all the diseases and the stripes and the and the sicknesses and the death and everything that god that god allowed christ to go through God cannot use that as a discipline for you anymore. So those, those things are from the enemy. But God can put you in a difficult situation. That's trials. Trials. And God can put you in, in, uh, in a situation where he disregards your, your efforts. He disregards your effort. You fast. You you pray and you and you uh, and you are doing all of this because you have a guilty conscience and you think by doing all all of this. There's some people that go into the ministry because of the guilty conscience. They're saying that they they do when you whenever you're doing a bargain with the Lord. When, sorry, whenever you're doing a bargain with the Lord, like if you do God, if you do this, I will do this. That is the law. God sometimes disregards that, you know? And so we, when God disregards uh, uh, our own efforts and God doesn't see it and God, um, and, and God puts us in a difficult situation, all of that is discipline. All of that is discipline. And, 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 and God, discipline is part of grace, but not uh, judgment. God, judgment, condemnation is not part of grace. Judgment is not part of grace. We have passed those things behind. All those have been left on the cross. And uh, like you said, you know, again, we're going to say, you know, like you said, introducing the Savior as Jesus Christ. And we're not under the law, like you said before, because under the law, they had to do sacrifices. So, so we identify the two different faiths. You know, the people, the Israelites, had, they were under the law. They had to do sacrifice. This faith, we're... we're Added to our faith, this faith is Jesus Christ, our Savior. We know that He died for us. Now we know we're going to give it all because we're going to work. This, that's, it says it in the Bible, you know, works towards our salvation. Now I know you can't. You no, know, no, 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 no. I do not agree. It, it, God, God doesn't say walk towards your salvation. Work God doesn't salvation. say. It says. Uh, it it's yeah. a slaver, where it says 12, work out your own salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling. It says it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So 
So it's uh, yeah. Well, walk out. What does that mean? Walk out to, uh, with fear and trembling. The the uh, the word fear and trembling is he brings them for uh, be in awe, be in awe of what God has done in your life. Yes. Uh, there are two times that fear and trembling was used. Uh, there's one where uh, in uh, and I forget uh, the reference now where. God was telling the, um, the the Jews that the nations of the of, that were around them would be amazed at how much they would be they would the the nations that around them would fear and tremble at how how much good that God would do to the children of Israel, and, and so that is that that is just the nations around them being in awe of what goodness God has done. To and that's what work out would be means if people could see Christ in you, you working mm -hmm. it out. That's what he's saying, to work it out, to let people see Christ in you. And that's where we're going to go to the virtual portion. To mm -hmm. the portion. So you're correct. The workout is to let Christ be so people could see it. Mm -hmm. Like you, said, you can't. You can't regain salvation because it's already been paid. The price has been paid for us. So we don't have to pay for anything. But correct. we have to do his will now and work out. Am I correct? Now, how do we work out? That's the question. And this is where we get the virtues because he says um, the virtues. Mm, so no, the virtues. No. Well, well, let's do the virtues first because each okay. virtue, and I don't know if we're going to, how many we're going to go to. But each virtue, when I was doing the studying, it has a lot of me in it. Correct. So I was supposed to say, I don't know how many we're gonna have, but we understand that we're gonna give all to knowing that Jesus Christ is our savior, the Holy Spirit is with us. Okay. And I, I'm not gonna go into all of it because a lot of this, the virtues, a lot of these points when I when I was doing them, you've brought them up several times. So um, we're probably only going to get two of them. What do you think? We'll probably get through knowledge, the virtue of knowledge. Yeah. Let me see how many of them in order. Seven. The first one is uh, virtual, which you define earlier. Okay, so let me count. Let me count. So we start with... Um, um, uh, 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 it says add to your faith virtue. So faith, um, faith is the start. Uh, virtue, yep. knowledge. So virtue, knowledge, strength, patience, um, godliness, uh, brotherly uh, kindness, uh, mm -hmm. and charity. Mm -hmm. So the seven. So, yeah. So we define virtue. Which you already defined it earlier when you were saying godliness. Yeah, well, virtue is actually goodness. Uh, goodness, virtue is uh, is an attribute of God. Of uh, uh, He is good, and God is good all the time. So, uh, virtue is goodness. And it, uh, so, when you say um, live by by uh, virtue, he's virtuous. That person is good. Uh, so, would it be good or would it be more excellent in this case? Let me look at. Uh, let me look at that in uh, amplified. Amplified would define it for us. Okay, five in amplified. Uh, let me go to the classical amplified. Sometimes the Webster Dictionary has a moral goodness, the practice of moral duties, and abstaining from vice or from from formality of life and conversations of the moral law. In this sense, virtue may be, and in many instances, must be discussed, distinguished distinguish from religion. The practice of moral duties merely from mo motive of convenience or compulse to regard reputations. The practice of moral duties from sincere love to God and his laws is the virtue and religion in this sense is the true. That virtue only makes our bliss below. Virtue is nothing but voluntary obedience to truth. That's okay. what 
So it says, it says in the Amplified, exercise your faith to develop, exercise your faith to develop virtue. And he, they went on to define what virtue is, which is uh, excellence, resolution, Christian energy. Um, well, I would say excellence is just goodness. Um, and it says, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. Okay. 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 Let's let's let. Uh, so we start. We we start with. Um, the word virtue as defined as a moral excellence, right. um, goodness, and a moral resolution. Um, so that's what I said earlier, moral excellence. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you so, know, uh -huh. um, if there are two, there, uh, there are two ways the two ways you can um, exercise goodness. You can exercise goodness out of your own strength, or you can exercise goodness um, out of the strength of the Holy Spirit. What, how does, what, what does each look like? Well, I think to, when you say an exercise goodness out of your own strength and Holy Spirit, Again, you're going to go into a lot of these virtues that he explained, because as mm -hmm. you grow in Christ, you know mm -hmm. what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at, at that point, as, as you're growing, you're knowing this is, this is right. And the other mm -hmm. point is with the Holy Spirit's conviction, well, it's not like you said, but it's guiding you, you know, and saying, this is what's right. Okay. Um, so I mean, this to me, it's really like I say, you grow after you, after a certain point, you know what's right from wrong as an individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, it's like a baby. When you're feeding the milk, you know, the little bit they get, you know, they're gonna reject it if it's not good for them. It's no different. Mm -hmm. You know what's good. Okay. The only the only uh, on the outside, those two things look identical. They're identical twins. You can uh, you can do good out of your flesh, and you can do good out of the spirit. And on the outside, somebody outside looking in cannot tell the difference. But on the inside, you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, are you doing whatever you're doing out of uh, life? Do you have life for that thing, or uh, are you doing it out of out of self will? Are you doing it out of life? Do you have life for that thing? Or are you doing it out of self-will? If you're doing it as a self-will and the, the willpower, it's like a diet. You, I, don't, I don't like to eat cheese because, uh, I, because I don't have a, a taste for it. I don't like too much cheese. They, that is me. That is, I don't have the life, uh, the, the life of God in me is saying uh, you don't have a taste for it. But there are people that are on diet and they're saying, I'm not going to eat cheese out of my willpower. When you are doing it out of your willpower, or if your motivation is, I've got to do this, or God is going to punish me, or I've got to do this so I can keep my righteousness, all of that, all of that is, um, the, all the, it's, what, what I'm saying is the motivation is key. The motivation of anything you do in the in, in kingdom in uh, Christ's kingdom is key. That's what determines if it is um, wood, hay, rubble that will be burnt up in uh, in uh, before Christ in the day, or if, if it would stay, if it stay. So even even a child can 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 do can do this do i do you have life for it do you have do you, um let me give you an example paul when he uh, he came to um he came to oh, shoot i've forgotten the name of the city i'll remember in a little while he came to the city and he said a a, a door of ministry was open to me 
Right. Now, if Paul was motivated by his flesh, he would say, go of ministry, I better go do it. But mm -hmm. Paul says, but I had no peace within because I did not see my brother Titus there. And so I left there. There was a door of ministry that he ignored, right? Because the spirit in him did not agree with staying there. And so uh, that is working by the spirit. That is working by the spirit. The Holy Spirit says, go look for Titus. Even though there was a door of ministry, people were saying, come teach us, come, come preach to us, come do this, come do that. There were people clamoring for ministry and he ignored it. And he followed the, he followed the, the, the life within. The life within will tell you where to go, where not to go, when to speak, when not to speak. That is, wow. that motivation, that motivation is key. Because if you're doing things and, and, and you're doing things out of your strength, you will know because your motivations may be contrary to what you're doing. Uh, it will be a diet. You know how diets are? You're yeah. willing not to, not to eat that thing. You're willing not to go to that gym. You're willing yourself, all that stuff. You're willing it out of your flesh to do it. The thing about um, a flesh is that it's, it's very, very weak. You can only sustain it for a short while. And because you can only sustain it for a short while, the fruit does not remain. But the spirit, when the spirit is directing you, you are at rest. You are no, you, there's no strife within. You are at rest. Uh, the Holy Spirit is directing you with, that's why he says, uh, with the Holy Spirit gives you the will to do right. and then gives you the ability to do or the opportunity sets up the outside opportunities. And then inside you, you're like, hey, I need to go to, uh, I need to go to wherever, Timbuktu. Uh, I want to go to Timbuktu, Lord. My friend is in Timbuktu, Lord. I want to be where my friend is. And the Spirit is working in you to want to do that. And then the, then the whole Spirit gives you the opportunity. Somebody says, uh, we have money to send somebody to Timbuktu. And so that, that, that is how the Holy Spirit works. But if, if, uh, if, on the other hand, you say, oh, I'm afraid God is going to send me to Timbuktu. Oh, God is going to send me to Timbuktu. Oh, my goodness. And they say, okay, we are looking for volunteers for Timbuktu. And they say, oh, I don't want to go to Timbuktu. I don't want to go to Timbuktu, but I will grit my teeth. I will grit my teeth and go to Timbuktu. No, that is doing it by your flesh. That's doing it by your flesh. You're doing it by self-effort. You're doing it by self-will. Um, and that would not last. Because if you self-will yourself to go to Timbuktu, guess what? Your, your flesh will fail and you will self-will yourself to come back as a failure. Yeah. And so this, I, I want to make, make sure we know that we're not falling on the law anymore, that we're falling on the grace because it is his divine power that is, that is doing this in, in us. So when you say work out your salvation, because it's only because Christ is working it in. Christ is working it in. It's not, it's not that you are doing anything out of, out of self-will. It's because God gave you the desire to do whatever it is you wanted to do. And God gave you the opportunity to do whatever it is. And, and, and you are cooperating with him. You're seeing the opportunity. You're excited about it and you're doing it. Um, we identify earlier when we were discussing this before, we identify when we accept Christ the, mm -hmm. that promise of the holy spirit it's in us at that point yes. so it's yeah. dwelling in us and you know that's why we're saying we're working out we're showing what how christ is growing in us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that's why i said we're working his will not our will you know and basically you like you said as we grow you know like you said he he didn't know he didn't see titus so he didn't go he knew because he mm -hmm. has grown as we mm -hmm. grow we know so he, he responded out of knowledge, you know, the spirit didn't come to him at night and say, hey, wake, wake up. You can't go into that town tonight. You got to, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a different, like what you're saying, defining it. As the but, you know, but you know, 
Yeah, though, even though I use Paul as the example right now, where he was following the spirit, you yeah. still have the choice. Even when you're grown, you still have the choice. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, the great, the big glaring failure of Paul's life is when he disobeyed the Sp Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit was telling him not to go to Jerusalem. You remember? And he said, I, I I must go to Jerusalem. I must go to Jerusalem. I must go. And the Holy Spirit kept telling with the uh, the the um, the daughters of Philip, the daughters of Philip that prophesied. They prophesied for prophesied by the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go to Jerusalem. He said, "Why are you making me sad? I am going to Jerusalem." He the Holy Spirit already told him too that uh, he shouldn't go to Jerusalem. Where he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. The prophet Agabus took the belt, his belt, uh, Paul's belt, and tied his hands with it and said, The Holy Spirit says, The person that owns this belt will be bound like I am bound in Jerusalem. Uh, and yet, Paul says, I am going to Jerusalem. Okay. So you still have a choice. Oh, yeah. You still have a choice. And Paul went to Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem, and it was in that uh, it was the one failure of his life that he did in Jerusalem. Guess what? When he got to Jerusalem, James, James and the brother, the brother of, of Christ, um, told him, "Now that you have come to Jerusalem, we have heard how you said." that people should not follow the law anymore. And people will hear that you have come to Jerusalem and there will be opposition to you. In order to minimize the opposition to you, uh, here are th these bro brothers that ha have, are going through the vow of the Nazarene. Pay for their shaving of the head because they've not completed, they completed the vow of the Nazarene. Pay for their shaving of the head and pay for their sacrifices. This is Paul. Paul that understood that there is now no more sacrifices. There's now no more need for sacrifices. He, because of his foolishness, and he's walking in the flesh. He went on to pay for them, for those men to shave their head. And he went on, he was on the way to the temple to pay for their sacrifices. And he was on the way to the, into the temple that they, the, the commotion and they arrested him and they were beating him. See that Paul, God, the reason why the Holy Spirit didn't want God, uh, didn't want Paul to go to Jerusalem was the Holy Spirit knew that Paul would compromise. Paul, all outside Jerusalem, kept saying, "There's only one sacrifice for sin forever," and yet here he was shelling out money for sacrifice that means nothing because some bunch of guys had the vow of the Nazarene. And God prevented him from paying for that sacrifice. And God prevented him by, from, from paying for that sacrifice by him being beat up and him being taken into prison. See how he felt. Just because he wouldn't listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told him of in, in, in himself. The Holy Spirit told him by the, uh, the five daughters of Philip. The Holy Spirit told him by Agabus, and he won't, he won't listen. And he almost fell, almost, almost uh, um, this, um, brought confusion right, the vision. to the whole Christendom by him going to the temple to pay for somebody's sacrifice when he knows one sacrifice was sin forever. And so, I, that's why I said it's not a matter of grow, it's a matter of constantly being aware, made, made aware uh, what you believe and going back to what you believe 
and not being shifted off of what you believe. One sacrifice for sin forever. And, and, and if, if Paul could fall, huh, no one is exempt from that. And again, the key thing, like you said, was, you know, with learning what's right from wrong, you, the question was, when do you know what you're doing, the will of, the, you know, your will or the Holy Spirit will? Mm-hmm. Paul was doing his will, basically. For that one, yeah. You know, so, and again, you know, we learn, I'm going to keep saying, the more we learn, the more we're able to know the difference and see that if the Spirit tells you go right, your knowledge of going left is not correct. Yeah, so and, and, and the funny thing is, like, even though he was making the wrong choice, even though he was failing, even though he was sinning, coming short of following the Holy Spirit, um, the Lord did not leave him. The yeah. Lord did not leave him. Yeah. The Lord was still with him. He was still performing miracles. It, he was still um, <clears throat> preaching the word. He was still, God was still with him. Even though God saw him disobeying, disobeying the Holy Spirit. I mean, and when you disobey the Holy Spirit, just disobeying God, just disobeying Christ. And so um, God allowed him to choose the, to make his choice because God has given us three things. Remember the three things God gave us at creation? God gave us his image, image deal. God gave us dominion. Uh, that means authority over the earth and, and the things <laughs> on the earth. And God gave us a choice, ability to choose. Now, yeah, you have the ability to make your choice, but you have no ability to choose to uh, change the consequences of a choice. Right. We're not going to be able to go to virtues. I mean, yeah. we're going to go to knowledge. Yeah. We're not going to, I wouldn't go to knowledge right now because it's, we got what? Not even, it's 12, 16. So yeah. we'll stop at one, the more excellence, and we'll pick up. Because each virtue has so much into it. I mean, if we discuss a lot of the stuff that went with it, and it, it was mm-hmm. interesting just listening to some of the things because I was like, oh, she's going to this thing. Oh, she's going to this. Oh, she's going to this. But you know one thing? Do you know what one thing? Um, uh, the easiest way to develop all of this is at the end. Mm-hmm. At the end. Uh, the easiest way to develop all of this is not, um, it's not, I, I will, I'll keep it. I'll keep it to the end. But at yes, the end, it tells it. you. It, yeah. At the end, it tells you if you don't have these things. I know the reason why. Okay. I, I, reason yeah. Why. So next week we'll pick up again um, verse five because verse five still has the, the knowledge. So we'll still pick up verse five. I was correct. I said we probably won't get out of verses five to seven. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all right. So next week we'll pick up um, five to seven again um, and every time we study it's always a blessing because we always learn we always grow so I think it doesn't matter if we spend an hour on one verse two hours the more you study the more you grow and the more you understand the word of God because each word in the Bible has a meaningful meaning so it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is uh, I mean the Holy Spirit is the one speaking through everybody in the, in the scriptures and he's consistent, and he one word of, from the Holy Spirit yes. can feed you for months. Yes, just meditating on that one word can feed you for months. Understanding the the, the in depth message the Holy Spirit is, is is trying to give. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm gonna pause the video so we can okay. pray. Hold on, stop.